Welcome to an exclusive NCIX Tech Tips video from Computex 2013. I hope you guys know this. If you don't, then NCIX is one of our sponsors powering the trip to have me here, bringing you all this cool content, so make sure that you don't miss any of it. But this right here, Intel HD Graphics. Now, Haswell just launched, and of course, Haswell wasn't necessarily about dramatically improving the performance of the CPU side, but what Intel has done is they have really changed the power consumption characteristics as well as the graphics characteristics of this new architecture. So these kinds of thin and light notebooks, okay, we're used to seeing those, but now they're going to have longer battery life, which is cool. They're also going to have upgraded HD graphics. So the demo we're looking at right right here is on a 4K display. This is 4K video playback, which is all fine and good, okay, so your computer can play back 4K, that's neat. Your notebook can play back 4K, that's really neat. Your super thin notebook can play back 4K, super neat. Okay, how about this? How about your CPU utilization is less than 10%, how neat is that? So it's actually using the GPU in order to accelerate the playback of this 4K content rather than the CPU, which is going to improve your battery life and reduce the amount of heat output that's being thrown out by your ultra-portable notebook. But the thing here is that sometimes improving the graphics performance is actually much more practical than improving the CPU performance. And Intel knows this. Check this out right over here. So this is going to work with pretty much any video editing suite that has support for OpenCL. So the demo here is being done on Vegas Pro, but this is also applicable to suites like Adobe as well. So check this out. There's two concurrent windows here. And I think it should be pretty obvious based on that this demo is about Iris Pro graphics, which are running on this notebook right here, which one is running on the CPU and which one is actually using GPU acceleration from Iris Pro in order to play back these post-processing effects that have been added to the footage, in this case, uh, lighting effects. Now, what I'd like you to do, William, is can you please turn off for me the CPU-driven one on this side, and I'd like the camera to come and check this out. Okay. Can you turn that one off for me? Okay, so right now, only the GPU side is running. So you can see right here, not only is it running at a much higher frame rate, but GPU usage is around 90 to 95%, and CPU usage has gone all the way down to as low as sort of 10 to 15%, hovering in that range. Now, if you look back up at the screen, you can see that without that CPU one hogging up all the resources, that's actually running even smoother for us now. Okay, so go ahead and turn this one off and turn this one back on because I'm going to prove to you guys that it's not a trick and the fact that we had that one running was not affecting the CPU side in any way. It is extremely choppy. So when you're trying to do a real-time preview of something that you're working on, not only are you not going to get as satisfactory an experience, but come on down here. You're going to get higher power consumption, more heat output, because you're going to be using your CPU in a much more intensive fashion than you would be if you're using GPU to accelerate the process. But mobile gets smaller and lighter than the notebooks we were looking at before, and Intel hasn't had nearly the presence in tablets that they would have liked over the last few years as this category has exploded. So what does... What, what has happened to the technology? Because Intel used to be the, the kingpin, the leader in the netbook days. Adam turned the market upside down. I mean, the millions upon millions of netbooks that people bought and then ultimately didn't end up using because even though the platform was extremely power efficient, it wasn't powerful enough to really use as an everyday computing device. So Intel's been working on that over the last few years and what's happened is the power efficiency has stayed with the newer updated Atom platforms, but the actual performance has increased now to the point where we can drive devices that are extremely small, extremely thin, deliver eight to 10 hours of battery life consistently, which is very competitive with other platforms, but having performance that is also something that you can tolerate and use and actually enjoy every day. With that said, the software has really helped a lot as well. I mean, back then, what, what chance did you have? You could have the most efficient processor in the world, you throw Windows XP on it or Windows Vista on it, and you're going to have a terrible experience. Now, 
Intel platforms can power not only Windows devices, but also Android devices. And I want to do a particular sort of closer look at this guy right here. So this is the Asus Pad phone. It's a Lexington platform, and it is not only an Android tablet, so you can go ahead, I'll, I'll prove it actually works. Yeah, it's Intel powering Android, but also check this out, it's a phone. So for 250 bucks, you can get a SKU like this that functions as a tablet, as a phone, and you know, I mean, this is really funny because I make fun of Diesel all the time for his Note 2, but would you buy one of these? Like, would you use one of these? I'm, 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 get, I'm, getting the, I'm getting the yes here. So these kinds of devices are only going to be growing. There's only going to be more of them. And now all of a sudden, we've got Intel inside as an option compared to all of the other things that have been out there for the last few years. Now, not to be content with just Ultrabook, because not everyone wants a notebook form factor these days, but at the end of the day, it's still a much better way to get real work done, whereas a tablet experience can really be better for media consumption or for generally sitting and reading the news or whatever else the case may be. Now, this guy right here, this is from Toshiba. This is featuring the fourth generation Intel Core Series processor, codename Haswell, and it gives better performance not only on the CPU, but also a particularly much better GPU experience compared to the previous generation products. Lower power consumption as well. So some of what you're about to see is two-in-one devices. So this is the concept of Ultrabook and tablet that are some of which leveraging this new technology, but some of them are only a hint of things to come. So I want to talk about what makes all of these different from each other and how they allow you to use it as a notebook or as a tablet. So I'm going to get Scott, my wonderful model here, to show me how this one works. So we've got a button detachment here. So you get a full-blown Windows 8 tablet and then you can reattach it to the base. Now all of a sudden you've got an Ultrabook. Bam. What's next? This guy right here, this is the Tai Chi from Asus. It's got a dual screen concept, so you can either pick it up as a tablet, use it like that. You can use the dual screen functionality to play a video on the back for your kid while you sit and do some work on the front and you type away at that. And maybe that's the concept that's right for you. What's this guy right here? Okay, so maybe you don't, this is from Panasonic, so maybe you don't want a dual screen on the back. Maybe you prefer that the screen folds completely around in a 200 and, or, well, how many, 360 degree hinge? I guess it goes all the way around. Can you show us that hinge design from the side? Show us how that, uh, that folds like that. Now, we've seen this before with a Lenovo product, the Yoga in the past, but, I mean, there's only room for these designs to keep being refined. But that's not it. What about sliders? This is a design from Sony that allows you to take what is otherwise a tablet. There you go, tablet. Okay, show me it's not a tablet anymore. Whoa, magic, bam. So there's the hinge design on that guy. It looks pretty, uh, looks actually pretty rugged in there. All right, we're gonna keep going. So this is another button detached one. This is uh, an, HP uh, an HP Envy with Beats Audio. And we've got two more that we wanna show you guys. Sorry, can I just, sorry about that guys. All right, another slider, bit of a different design. This one gives us a little bit of a larger keyboard to work with. This is the one that I would probably lean towards because I tend to prefer a larger keyboard for that typing experience. But that is not all. Holy crap, the imagination knows no bounds. This is a Dell XPS model. This is the XPS 12 that can either be a notebook like that. What I like about this one is you can tuck the screen away in the inside just like you can with a normal Ultrabook. But you want to go tablet mode, you flip it around, go like that and you're, it's a tablet. It's just the beginning, folks. This has been an exclusive tour of the Intel booth on NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.